Shepard of a soul, Shepard of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's side. Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. our Lord and our Father, that you are children, my Lord and my Father, that you are created in your own image and own likeness, whom because of us, my Lord and my Father, you deny yourself sleep. Abba Father, we have come to reverence you, we have come to thank you, we have come to adore you, we have come to say, Lord, thank you. Daddy, mm-hmm. Lord, we appreciate you, we are so grateful, my Lord and my Father. That is Lord, for whom you are in our life. You are the beginning, you are the end, you are the alpha, you are the omega. Yes. Mercy has brought us into your friend this hour, Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. And the Lord, the Lord of people, what an opportunity. Lord, we thank you. Mm-hmm. We worship. As we have come this hour, my Lord, my God. Father, Lord, may you give us, my Lord, my Father. That Lord, feed us with that spiritual food, my Lord, my Father. That God, as we eat, we no hunger anymore, my Lord and my Father. Oh Lord our God, I humble myself before you. Lord, I have no part of my own, I have no zone of my own, but I have you in me. Therefore, Lord, speak to me, speak to me, my Lord and my Father. I will Lord, have you awake this morning. Let your children, my Lord and my Father, be filled to the flame with your word, my Lord and my Father, which is life. And at the end, oh Lord Jesus, each and every one of you know, in this mountain this morning, my Lord, my Father, we will all have every cause to continually glorify your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Abba Father. Blessed be your holy and mighty name. But in Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Titled, Show the Word into Your Heart. Show the Word of God into Your Heart. Mm-hmm. Show the Word of God into Your Heart. Mm-hmm. We are going to look together. There will be a, a kind of a small short uh, long reading this morning. God will help us. We are going to look at the Word of God. Is going to be a foundational test that is in the book of Mark in the book of Mark, Mark chapter 4, Mark chapter 4, from verse 1, clearly. Mark chapter 4. Praise the Lord, somebody. Mark chapter 4. From verse 1, the Bible says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into the ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land too. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in his doctrine. So, mark him. Behold, there went out from soul to soul, for, and it came to pass. As he sowed, 
Some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Why? And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had not depth of earth. Six. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. Seven. And some fell among the towns, and the towns grew up. And it yielded no fruit. Eight. And other fell on a good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some a hundred. Hmm. Praise the Lord, somebody. And he began, he continued, he was fine, and he said unto them again, We that have ear you know, to hear, let him do what, let him hear. Then, and when he was alone, they went. They that were about him with the dread asked of him the parable. Eleven. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mission of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parable. Well, that seeing they may not see and not perceive and hear, they may not hear and not understanding, lest at any time they should be converted and their sin should be forgiven. Thirteen. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you know all parables? What is it? The sower sowed the word. Fifteen. And these are by the wayside, near the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart. Sixteen. And these, and these are they likewise which are sown on the stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately received it with gladness. Seventeen. I have no root in themselves, and so endure for, for, a, for a time. Afterward, when affliction and persecution arise for the world's sake, immediately they are offenders. 18. And these are they which are sown among tongues, such as hear the words. 19. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the loss of other things entering in to the world, and it Become unfruitful. Twenty. This is last verse. We're going to stop. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit. Some thirty fruit, some sixty, and some a hundred. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Brethren, where we just read now is a part that I know that almost all of us are familiar with. And I want us to take an in-depth look in it. Now we just read now, our Lord Jesus Christ, in his explanation, see, he compared or he likened the heart of man, he likened the heart, my heart, to the ground on which a sower, on which a farmer sowed his seed. Which literally means that our heart, my heart, your heart, is the ground, is the soil that he's talking about, on which God's word must be sown for it to produce results in our life. Our heart is the soil. The seed that the farmer planted is the word of God. So the same way the soil, the same way the ground is fertilized with manure to receive seed from the farmer and produce fruits. But then, so also is our heart programmed to receive and multiply what is sown in it. What is the seed that you are sowing in your heart? What is the seed that you are allowed to grow in your heart? Whatever a man saw it. What is that seed? Jesus Christ took time to explain to his hearers. He bring you know a, 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 an occupation that at least they will be to, to a very large extent that they will not be ignorant of farming in those days. So we use it now to describe the game how his world operates. 
we are familiar with the story. How a farmer will go to the uh, to his farm, cultivate and plant a seed, waiting for the harvest. The same way our heart is in problem to receive the word of God and to be able to produce his results. Where I want us to look at it is this. I will now begin to imagine. So we cannot afford as Christians. If this is what the, 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 the parable now means, it is now imperative, it is now compelling that we cannot afford as Christians to allow the ground of our hearts to lie fallow. What I mean to lie fallow to be uncultivated. It is dangerous for us to allow the ground of our hearts, which is the soil, to remain fallow. We must consciously and continuously sow the word of God into it. We must work, we must consciously, we must continually sow the word of God into our hearts. Into our hearts. In the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. If you look at the, uh, from verse 20 to 22. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22, the Bible said, My son, attend to my ways. We are talking about sowing the word of God. My son, my daughter, attend to my ways. Incline thy ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. 22. For they are alive unto those that find them and help to all their flesh. If we can know the importance of the word of God, appreciate it and sow it and guide it with all diligence, the Bible says that it is what that it is alive to those that find them and a help to their flesh. If we can sow the word of God into our hearts. If we don't allow our heart to be followed, there is a danger when we say, okay, we don't care. I don't want to sow. Now the truth is that if we don't if we don't do this, if we don't cultivate the ground, if we don't cultivate the soil of our hearts for the word of God to be planted, something will still grow there. Something will definitely grow there, and it will produce for us what we don't want. Many of us that came from the village, or let us say, any good farmer, any good farmer will tell you. For those who don't know about farming, any good farmer will tell you that if you leave your ground farm. If you leave your portion where you are supposed to cultivate to farm and refuse to farm and sow it, for this is best known to you, something will still grow on that land. That you decided because of laziness, that you decided because of any reason whatsoever, not to do anything on that land, something will still grow on that land. The problem is that what we grow on that land is what the farmer does not want. And what is that? Wheat. Wheat, in this sense, if we refuse to cultivate our heart and make it through for the word of God to go and dwell, there is a man the Bible described. He said, It's an accusation of the brethren. He had no permanent address. When he was accustomed by Lord Jesus Christ, I said, where are you from? He said, I'm going to run and flow. Somebody who is going to run and flow has no permanent address. He's looking for an opportunity. He's looking for that wind that is very weak that he can stop from. So when we refuse to cultivate our heart for the word of God to come and dwell, that man who goes to run and flow will come and plant what weeds. And it will lead us into sin. It will lead us into many things that we do not want in life. 
But eventually, if unchecked, it's not going to be the one to directly to help fire. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Our life is the product of the information that we sow into our hands. Our life is what? Our life is the product of the information that we sow into our hearts. Be mindful of the information that you are allowed to come into your hearts. It will go a long way to shape your heart. It will go a long way to shape your life. Any information we allow to dwell in us have the capacity to shape us. And that is why the book of Proverbs 43, which you know very well, he said, please, please, if you love your life, if you don't want to be a plus one in the kingdom of darkness, guide your heart with all diligence. Do everything possible. Guide it with all work, with all diligence. Why? Because that is where the issues of life goes up, spring up from. That is where the issues of life goes up, spring up from. So that is why we need to do what? To guide our heart with all diligence. Make sure that what comes in into the heart and say is what we allow. That is why many times in Africa, you know, we, 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 we look at the farmers, you know, with a little look. You know, we have a reset to the background. But the intelligence is a farmer that took time to go and sow a seed. A time we call when we are going up, we go back into the farm and, and with all the weeds. So as to give room for the seed to do what to terminate and produce. The same way we need to check make our heart always on a daily basis. Those things that can make us suffer, those things that can come in and check the word of God. You know that we are read in our financial affairs. Some may see it, you know, with joy, with gladness. But because it, it, they are not good farmers, they didn't know that they're supposed to dig, dig the ground of their heart so deep up the, the seed can fall in. He said, the God of the air, man, come and do you know, Merry Christmas on it. Some may see it with joy. But because that joy is not unfair, it is superficial. That is why it can be choked by the heat. That is why it can be choked by the circumstances, by the issues of life. When try a call, when temptation come, there are no more. Some people are the people who say from time in order capture their hearts. That there is no way that those, those words are due for their fire. The Bible says those words are stony. Stony means that they are like, you know, a, a, a stone with the water, but they know what they can see them in the down. Their heart has been gone up, and their heart has been smeared. But the fourth group is the group that said, it's a good soul that does what? That the, that, that the seed now enters and it begins to do what? It begins to produce it in 30, in 60, in hundreds. The same way, if we can plant, we really plant the word of God that we hear every day in this mountain, it will produce to us. Harvest that you look into your life and you say, for, for sure, our God and Sabrina. For sure, it's not for me, it's not of good. As the book of Jeremiah has said, somebody praise the Lord. Um, yeah. That means everything that you require for life will come from what? It will come from our hearts. We come from our hearts. Our heart is very, very important. Our heart is very, very important. Our heart is very, very important. We need to be very, very conscious. What we allow, what we allow to, to dwell in our hearts. Our hearts, you see, in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, the word of God says, For with the heart, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made what unto salvation. It is what you believe that you can be able to confess. Our heart plays an important role in our life. And we need to be in the business of showing the word of God in our life. Not only hearing, but showing it. 
You see, when we just read now, you cannot see that as we speak God's word, we are planting the seed in our hearts for the harvest to result that we desire. Mm -hmm. You know, as well, what the book says, what the Bible says in the book of Psalm 119, verse 11, you are aware that I have hidden in my heart. You are aware that I have sown in my heart like a pedagogy summer. You are aware I have planted in my heart that I will not do it, but I will not sin against you. That I will not, that I will not sin against you. We need to be serious. We need to be serious. And planting the word of God, not only hearing or speaking the word, but to let the world have root in our life. To let the world have root in our life. Sowing the seed of God's word, brethren. Do we not realize that the harvest of our tomorrow, the harvest of our tomorrow depends on the seed so today? The harvest of, what, of our tomorrow it depends on what it depends on the seed sown on it today. Our you see, our ways are like what they are seeds. That is exactly what Jesus Christ is trying to let people know. Like, our ways are like seeds. The ways of our mouth, the ways that come from our heart, from our heart to our mouth, and we speak, they are like seeds. They have the ability to create faith for life. How do we know? The book of God said it. The book of Proverbs says it. Proverbs 18. Proverbs chapter 18. Chapter 20. That was 20 to 21. Proverbs 18. 20 to 21 says, A man's belly shall be satisfied. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. 21. Death and life are not in the power of tongue, mm -hmm. and they that love it shall do it, shall eat the fruit of it. Have you not seen that the ways we speak is a seed? We not talk about food. We not talk about food. That's it. So the ways we speak is like a seed. They have the ability to create death or life. If we plant the word of God in our life, use it when we're supposed to use it, you will see that we have that power. We have that creative power. That's why the Bible says the, 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 the power of God and life is in the word of God. So the word of God is to govern our thoughts. The word of God for me and you that we hear every day, that we read every day. They are meant to govern our thoughts. They are meant to direct our actions. They are meant to lead us in our conversations. There is ability. There is ability in every seed. In every seed, there is ability in every seed to do what to produce. There is ability for every seed to produce once it is planted. Once it is planted, there is ability for it to produce. There is. If it is planted, if you plant the seed of God's word in your heart, if all of us in this mountain plant the seed of God in our hearts, and we speak it out, we speak it out in obedience, we speak it out in holiness and in righteousness, it will produce life for us. Mm -hmm. It will do what it will produce life for us. But on the other hand, if you decide, if you decide to plant seeds of memory, if you decide to plant the seed of complaining, of biting, of fear, of doubt, of gossip, etc., it will also produce its result. It will definitely, it will definitely produce something. But the irony of it all, what it will produce is what death. What it will produce is what death. It will not produce what will gladden your hands. It will not produce what will make you to say, ah, the Lord is good. Because you decided to plant the seed of this Lord in your heart. 
put to produce of death. And I believe nobody in this mountain wants to produce anything that will that will give you a negative results. Praise Master Jesus Christ. That's why in the book of First John, book of First John chapter three, First John chapter three verse nine. Now this is the Bible says, "Whosoever is born of God, do not commit sin." Why? For his seed remained in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. What is sin? We're talking about for the word of God truly remained in him. For the word of God truly is separating him or her. The word of God is a compass to each and every one, to each and every believer. If we have it in us, it will tell us, no, this is not right. This is the way. It will be like a, 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 like step now when we are driving. It helps to guide our actions, our thoughts, our conversations. So if the word of God is not sown in our hearts, then the devil will have, he will have a few day. He will sow his own, which will produce the life. That me and you will not enjoy. That is the problem. That me and you will not enjoy. So, brethren, we have to get serious. We have to do what? We have to get serious with the business of truly, with the business of truly sowing the word of God into our hearts in obedience, in righteousness, and in holiness. Jesus Christ, who is our and the finisher of our faith, he sold that word in his heart. If, if that word is not sold in your heart, it is quite impossible for you to match force with that accuser of the brethren. Look at what happened in the book of Matthew. After his 14 days of fasting and prayer, he said that accuser of the brethren that has no power that grace is accustomed immediately. And he began to tell him, if he had not shown that word, Somebody who is hungry for 40 years, for 40 days, he could have four prayer to settle. But he used the word that he saw in his hand. He said, I was saying, I look at the encounter because of time. From the, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 10. Then we see the middle of the streets into the wilderness, depending on the devil. And when he had passed 40 days and 40 nights, he was asked that, after all, and hunger. True. And when the tempter came to him and he said, he that having the son of God, command his toes to be blessed because he was hungry. So, but the answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. If he did not sow that word, if he's only a hearer, for the main fact that he's hungry, he could have been a dilemma. He could have been a dilemma. He could have been a dilemma. If I cannot be able to combat it, can you give me something to eat? Many of us, even though we have been in church for a long time, many of us are eating away our seeds, expecting a harvest. You cannot eat away your seed and expect a harvest. You cannot be careless about the seed and expect a harvest. <laughs> it is the, 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 the word of God. If we are not challenged of it, to see a positive result will be difficult. We have to be serious. We do what is sowing the word of God in our life. How do we do it? Joshua, when Moses died, the shoot of Moses was so big for anyone to you know to uh, to, 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 to keep in. Everybody in Israel, you know, they were afraid. Who can do it? Who can lead us? But when Joshua was called as young as he was, he was given a command. He said, Joshua, Joshua 1 8, which are all of us know. If you do not be careless like your brothers. If you are not my talent, if you can keep this word, if you can keep my word, if you can study it, if you will not let it depart from you day and night, definitely you will do what I must. And he, he, he does it. He listed as well. The book of Proverbs said, My son, my daughter, listen to my words. Joshua listed and he fulfilled. I pray God will give us the grace to listen and to put his words into action in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brethren, we need to study the word of God. 
We need to be conscious of what we watch or what we see. Even the television or radio is a means of uh, uh, communication. It's a means of enlightenment. But a lot of things are happening in the world today. Many things have been contaminated. The yeah, revelation has come upon this mountain, which we will hear in front of the uh, uh, messages that each and every one in this mountain that we need to be very, 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 very careful on what we watch on the television, what we listen to. That we need to be very, very well careful. Yeah. Everybody, we have to start from ourselves before our children. The message has come. I will not hear it again. Be very, very careful. A lot of things is political today. Many things we will say, ah, we will not do it again. But we, you know, we, 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 we take pleasure and just know that does it. So when rapture comes, it's just like somebody who stole and somebody who helped. He stole and you will have it to buy from him. They call it a betting. So if we say we don't do this and we take pleasure and just know that does it by watching, the Lord has done, we have to be very, very careful. God will help us and I them of Jesus Christ. Because of time, if you have time, you read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, Romans 10 to 17, and Ephesians and chapter 6, from verse 10 to 16. Brethren, this is how far we can go this morning because of time, uh, uh, friend. I pray God Almighty will help us to know the seriousness of cultivating and planting his way deeply in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We should not be careless again to allow Satan to have a few day in our life by planting what is not desired of us. What will bring confusion to our life? God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We first with this verse 10 to 16, you read if you have time. This is how we can go. God bless the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, are you out there? You are not born again. Are you out there? You are not giving your life to our Lord Jesus Christ. No matter how you try, you cannot be able to show this word of God into your heart. You might receive it as you are hearing it now. It might sound sweet to your ear. But because you are not giving your life, that word will find it difficult to be able to penetrate into your heart to be able to bear results. That's why the book of Proverbs chapter 3 verse 20. If the God Almighty is knocking at the door of your heart this morning, he said, The Lord, I stand and knock at the door. If anyone hears my heart, my dog, I tell him, I will come in and die with him. And he will repeat. Is the word of God knocking at the door of your heart now? Are you contemplating? Or are you ready now to open the door of your heart? If you are ready, can you please make this simple confession with me? And God Almighty. We will do in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say this after me. Lord Jesus, I admit I am a sinner. I am so privileged because I have had your word this morning. Lord, I have had the knocking. You are knocking at my door. I have opened my heart for you to come in. All as you come in, we Lord Jesus. Wash me, cleanse me. I know I deserve to go to hell. I depend on you to save me from my sin and error. I accept you this morning, this hour, this second, as my Lord and personal Savior. Thank you for forgiving me and forgiving me eternal life. Brother, if you have made that confession, I want to pray with you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord and our Father, as many that have had their mocking, and in all their heart, and the faithful, my Lord, my Father, and the Lord. As your word has said, may you go in and my father. That the Lord transform that life and change of things. Bring that life out of that into a marvelous light. Make your righteous and the Lord of grave and keep that life and my father. We will never go back to darkness again in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our Lord, King of all glory. Go in, my my father. Because he said, as many, my my father, come to you by no means you will not chase away. Thank you, everlasting father. For in Jesus Christ's mighty name we are praying. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've made a confession this morning. I want to reassure you that heaven is resourcing with you. We in this mountain we welcome you into the family of Almighty God. No power will never take you away again from the side of Almighty God, forever and ever in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord.
In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we are going to cast them. Amen. Amen. Amen.